Welcome to this lecture where we will compare how the maximum likelihood method and the method of ordinary least squares estimate the parameters of a simple linear regression model. If you are not familiar with ordinary least squares, I recommend that you first watch my second video about linear regression. Remember that the aim of simple linear regression is to fit the line that fits as good as possible to the data. To fit the line to some data, we can either use ordinary least squares or the maximum likelihood method. To explain how the two methods work, we'll use the following dataset. Well, the first row represents the x and y values of the first data point, and the second row represents the x and y values of the second data point, and so forth. Let's fit an arbitrary line to the data with an intercept of 0 0.75 and a slope of 2. Based on this equation, we can calculate the estimated y values based on a line at the given x values. For example, the estimated value 2.75 corresponds to this point on the line. This value can be obtained by setting x equal to 1 in a function of the line. The estimated value 3.75 corresponds to this point on the line, which can be calculated by setting x equal to 1.5 in a function of the line. And this estimated value corresponds to the following point on the line. And the last estimated value corresponds to this point on the line. We can now calculate the so-called residuals, which are the vertical distances between each data point and the line. This distance is calculated by subtracting the estimated y values from the observed y values. The distance between the first data point and the line is calculated by subtracting the estimated y value from the observed y value, which results in negative 0.75. The distance between the first data point and the line is therefore 0 0.75. The distance between the second data point and the line is calculated as the observed y value 5.0 minus the estimated y value 3.75, which results in a value of 1.25. Similarly, the difference between the third observed y value and the corresponding estimated y value is negative 1.25 and the distance between the last data point and the line is 0 0.75. Remember that these values are called residuals, which correspond to the vertical distances between the data points and the line. A negative residual means that the data point is below the line, whereas a positive residual means that the data point is above the line. If you square the residuals, we'll get the so-called squared residuals that are here rounded to 0 0.56 and 1.56. If you sum those squared residuals, we'll get the so-called sum of squared residuals. The method of ordinary least squares finds the optimal values of the intercept and the slope of the regression line that provides the lowest sum of squared residuals. We'll now have a look at how the maximum likelihood method can be used to fit the line to the data. In contrast to the ordinary least squares, the maximum likelihood method finds the optimal values of the intercept and slope of the line that maximizes the likelihood. Instead of calculating the distances between the data points and the line, the maximum likelihood method can be seen as if place a curve based on some distribution around the line. The distribution we choose should reflect the distribution of the data points around the line. We'll here use the normal distribution as an example. We'll here place one curve for each data point. From the lecture about the normal distribution, we know that this function can be used to draw the curve of the normal distribution, where mu is the mean and sigma is the standard deviation. Since the curves are centered around the line, the value of mu corresponds to the y value of the line the estimated y values. We can therefore replace mu by the equation of the line, where x sub i is the x data, 
and the value of the equation or the line corresponds to the estimated values. Why sub i is the observed y data? And this part is therefore simply the differences between observed data points and the corresponding y values of the line. Sigma determines the width of the curve and is estimated based on the spread of the data points around the line. To calculate the likelihood value of the first data point, we therefore use a normal distribution with a mean of 2.75 and the observed y value of data point number 1. For example, if we set sigma to 1, we can calculate the likelihood to 0.301, which corresponds to the height of the normal distribution curve with a mean of 2.75 and a standard deviation of 1. Note that we would have got the same results if we instead would have used a normal distribution with a mean of 0 and computed the height based on the residual, because the residual tells how far away from the mean the data point is located. The likelihood function is defined as the joint probability density function of our observations as a function of theta, where theta is a vector of parameters, and this is some probability density function. For example, if we like to estimate the intercept, slope and the standard deviation of some data that we think is normally distributed, we would simply use the probability density function of the normal distribution. For every data point, we would calculate the corresponding likelihood value that in this case corresponds to the height of the curve of the normal distribution, and multiply all those likelihoods, so that we get the joint likelihood of the estimated parameters given the observed dataset. Let's calculate the joint likelihood by setting the intercept to 0 0.75 and the slope to 2. Then the values of this expression will correspond to our previous estimated y values of the line. By fixing sigma, the standard deviation, to for example 1, we can now calculate the likelihoods. This calculation corresponds to the likelihood of the first observation, which results in a value of about 0 0.3. The calculation is based on the observed y value and the estimated y value of the line. The difference between these two values is equal to how far away the data point is from the center in the normal distribution curve. Similarly, the calculation of the second data point corresponds to the height of the curve here, which is equal to about 0.18. Note that the shorter distance to the regression line results in a larger value of the height of the normal distribution curve, since such values are closer to the mean of the curve. The product of these four values is our joint likelihood value. Let's change the intercept of the line from 0 0.75 to 0. This is the equation of that line. The estimated y values will now change to these values, which correspond to the value of the line at the given x values. The differences and the square differences between the observed and the estimated y values will now change to these values. We see that the sum of the squared residuals has increased from 4.35 to 6.5, which means that this line fits worse to the data compared to our previous line with an intercept of 0 0.75. When we calculate the joint likelihood value, we see that it has been reduced from 0 0.003 to 0 0.001. A reduced likelihood value therefore means that the line fits worse to the data. It is therefore more likely that the intercept of the line is equal to 0 0.75 than 0, given the data. Let's try many different values of the intercept and calculate the joint likelihood of the corresponding values of the intercepts. We see that the likelihood is maximal if the intercept is set to 0 0.75. The maximum likelihood estimate of the intercept is therefore 0 0.75. 
if we would make a similar plot of the sum of the squared residuals. We will see that the sum of the squared residuals is minimized when intercept is set to 0 0.75. If we instead fix the intercept to 0 0.75 and change the slope, we'll get the following joint likelihood values as a function of the slope. We see that the joint likelihood is maximal when the slope is set to 2. Similarly, we see that the sum of the squared residuals is minimized when the slope is equal to 2. Note that both the slope and intercept are estimated at the same time, where we in this case seek the maximum likelihood in the three-dimensional space. In addition, sigma, the standard deviation, is also estimated at the same time in the maximum likelihood method. The problem with the joint likelihood is that it is super small, especially if you have many data points, since we will then multiply many values that are less than 1. Such small values close to zero are complicated for computers to handle. This is the reason why we usually instead work with the log likelihood function, which will generate the log of the likelihood, because these values are not close to zero. And the value of the parameter that results in maximum likelihood is the same value that results in maximum log likelihood. Also note that the parameter value which maximizes the log likelihood is identical to the value of the parameter that minimizes the negative log likelihood. If you compare the negative log likelihood function based on the normal distribution with the sum of the squared residuals for estimating parameters in simple linear regression, we see that both methods estimate the parameters of the regression line based on the difference between observed y values and estimated y values. This is why both methods will result in the same estimated parameters of the regression model. One advantage of using the maximum likelihood estimate instead of the ordinary least squares is that the maximum likelihood method can be used for distributions other than a normal distribution, whereas the ordinary least squares assumes that the errors are normally distributed for statistical hypothesis testing. For example, if we would use regression on count data, it might be more appropriate to assume a Poisson distribution, which can be used with the maximum likelihood method. Without going into the mathematical details, we can calculate the derivative of the following log likelihood function and then set that function to zero and solve for sigma, or mu. We'll then end up with the following estimate of the variance, or the standard deviation if you take the square root of both sides. The variance in ordinary least squares is estimated with the same equation, except for the difference in the denominator. Note that the variance is a biased estimate in maximum likelihood, whereas the estimated variance in ordinary least squares usually adjusts for the bias to compute an unbiased variance. The ordinary least squares would, in our example, estimate the variance by n minus 2 in the denominator since we estimate the two parameters of the regression line. This was the end of this lecture about the maximum likelihood method and the ordinary least squares in linear regression. Thanks for watching.